All right, so Workplace and Apprenticeship Math 30 review. This is the review for the final exam. Um, it's just a brief outline of all the con concepts that we've taken so far uh, this semester and what you should be reviewing for your final. So in Chapter 1, we talked about linear relations. So we talked about sketching lines, um, putting our, our, our data into tables and graphs. And, uh, of course, this was the very first lesson. And we talked about we reviewed slope and that sort of thing. Um, I think we did y equals mx plus b for the uh, equation of a line. We talked about direct uh, relationships, okay, where you have a, uh, a straight line, a direct linear relation. And then we also talked about an indirect relation as well, which you can, uh, you can uh, check that out. So the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, you need to remember that. The m, what does the m refer to? Who remembers? The m is the slope, very good. And the b is the? Anybody remember what the b is? Yeah, it's the y-intercept, very good. Okay. Uh, scatter plots and linear trends. We also looked at um, uh, how to describe what's happening if we have a, you know, a scatter plot like this where we have a bunch of points. What's the overall trend, the line of best fit that would fit right in between those points? Is it generally going up or is it going down? Uh, you can describe generally what's happening. So we talked a little bit about that. Chapter two, limits to measurement. We talked about the difference between accuracy and precision. We talked about tolerances and that sort of thing. So um, you, you might have to look at those lessons again. Remember we were talking about a, a measurement with that's plus or minus you know, 0.5 grams or something like that. So that's what um, the precision is. And the tolerances, sort of like when you add things together, where could your answer be between what value and what value? So we talked about that in chapter two. 3.1 was mean, median, and mode. The measures of central tendency, mean is the average, median would be the middle number when you arrange them from smallest to greatest or greatest to smallest, it's the very middle number. Or if there's an even number of numbers, it's the average of the middle. And the mode is the number that appears most often. Okay, that's the mode. Weighted means, okay, trimmed means, and outliers. So we talked about those. Weighted means means that uh, if you have certain things that are worth more, then you have to consider that that counts a little bit more towards the average, right? Trimmed means uh, is like if, if we have the, the lowest value and the highest value, we might want to take one or two, uh, you know, one or two groupings of those off to make sure we get a better uh, indication of what the average is. And outliers would be those values that are extremely either above or below the data, right? That, that, that don't really fit, okay? Percentile ranking, okay? If uh, you are in the 92nd percentile, that means that of all the data values or all the people or whatever, you are right about here and 92% of people are, uh, have scores or have whatever less than you. And that means there's about 8% of people that are above you. So if you're the 92nd percentile for whatever this grade, that means there's 8% of people that have a higher grade than you and 92% that have a lower grade than you. Okay, chapter four, probability and odds. Experimental probability would be um, the chances of something happened based on previous uh, data that you've gathered. <clears throat> so if you're talking about how many people wear red to school, and you say about 30% of people wear red to school, then that's, and, and if it was experimental, that would be that you have actually written down how many people every day have, have worn red, and based on your data, that's the probability you give. If you say something like how many people would wear red, and you say, well, there's about you know, seven main colors that, that could possibly be worn, and so you know, it's all random, so it's one out of seven. That would be theoretical probability just based on the nature of the, of the, the situation. Now, it, it, it's not always going to be like that, especially if our school colors are not red, then maybe we, you might see more blue, which is our school colors. You might see more people wearing blue. Or maybe black is really popular for some reason, or yellow or whatever. Um, there may be a weighted average involved there, right? Odds and probability. Okay, so let's say there's a 13% chance of something happening. That means 13 out of 100. That is probability. Odds would be 13 to 87. This is the, the chances that something, the event would happen, 
compared to the number of times that the event would not happen. So there's a big difference between odds. So these are odds right here, odds. And this is probability. Uh, so make that red. So this is probability right here. Probability, okay? It's the number of positive outcomes out of the total. And this is number of po positive outcomes compared to the number of negative outcomes. All right? So that's the difference between odds and probability. Okay, cruising through here, chapter five, properties of geometric figures. Okay, um, properties of triangles, we explored triangles. Yes, Pythagorean theorem. I think we also, in here, did we do, uh, oh no, sine and cosine law are down here. Okay, so that's a bit different. Uh, we talked about uh, all aspects of triangles. Quadrilaterals are closed figures with four sides, right? We talked about um, trapezoids and rhombus and squares, rectangles, and all that sort of stuff. Regular polygons would be where all the sides and all the interior angles are equal, right? So a square would be a regular um, quadrilateral. Um, a rectangle would not be regular because you do not have all sides and angles the same. Transformations in Chapter 6. So when we talk about transformations, there are transformations where we slide things, right? Up, down, left, right, we can slide. Um, I believe in Chapter 6 we also talked about uh, stretches or I enlargements. Is that correct? Let's just see here. So where's Chapter 6? Transformations, okay, <coughs> where, where a shape or something is... Okay, so we did translation, that's moving. We did reflections. We did rotations. All right, and we did dilations, that is something gets larger or gets smaller. Okay, so those are your uh, aspects of your transformations. And something, of course, could undergo multiple transformations. Right? All right, so that's, that's chapter six. Uh, chapter seven, again, we're getting closer to the end of the, the section. This wasn't that long ago. We did the sine law and we did the cosine law. So for any triangle, if this is A, B, and C, this would be angle A angle B and angle C. And we remember the sine law is a sine of A over A equals sine B over little b equals sine C over little c. So that's the sine law. And the cosine law is also for any triangle. doesn't have to be right, right? This is the thing. This is what's cool about these laws. Is they don't have to be right triangles. It should be any triangles at all. And it would be something like this. If we wanted to find this side, it would be A squared equals B squared plus C squared. That's part of the Pythagoras' theorem. That's easy to remember that. And then it's always minus 2 times these values over here, BC, times the cos of the opposite uh, angle to A, so cos of big A. That is the cosine law. So if you're given triangles where you have all three sides, you use the cosine law. If you're given a triangle where you have a side and then an angle and another side, that's cosine law. Uh, sine law is where you can have a pair of angle and opposite side. If you have angle and opposite side at all, you can use sine law to find uh, something else. And then finally, chapter 8, this is the last chapter we did, talking about uh, small businesses, talking about loans, expenses, revenues, fixed costs, variable costs, all that sort of stuff. Um, just learning some of the terms. And uh, you also learned about buying versus leasing and all the little details there. And... Uh, yeah, so that was uh, chapter eight, all the little aspects about owning your own business. So if you want to look up any of these lessons, um, type in on YouTube, MathWell, and then do W, A, and then a space, and 30, and then you can follow that by your section number, okay? You search that on YouTube, then you should be able to find, like if you wanted to look for 8.1, uh, or if you, actually chapter eight's pretty thin there, because that was a, largely an individual assignment, but if you want to do, any other chapter, 6.2, you'll get the full lesson on YouTube, okay? Do you guys have any questions for me? That's just a little bit of the outline of the course, right? So I would encourage you to ask questions, look at uh, um, videos again, um, do examples. You should have all of your homework returned to you, so you can go over those. If you've kept those, uh, if you haven't chucked them or <laughs> lost them, you should have your old homework. I do have a solution manual up here that I will uh, make you available to if you're in my class, and you can come and look at the uh, solution manual uh, for whatever you're working on to study.